My dear friends, the theme of our discourse is thus, you lack focus, not potential. Let these words sink deep into your consciousness, for they hold the key to unlocking the infinite power that resides within you. Many of you come here tonight feeling trapped, limited or unfulfilled. You look at your lives and wonder, is this all there is? You compare yourselves to others who seem to have achieved more, accomplished greater things, or found deeper satisfaction. And in doing so, you fall into the trap of believing that you somehow lack the potential. But I say to you with absolute certainty that this belief is nothing more than an illusion. It is a veil cast over your eyes by the world of appearances, obscuring the truth of your divine nature. For you see, my dear friends, you are not merely human beings having a spiritual experience. You are spiritual beings having a human experience. And as such, your potential is as vast and limitless as the infinite mind of God itself. The great secret, the transformative truth that I wish to impart to you tonight, is this. Your problem is not a lack of potential. Your problem is a lack of focus. For it is through the power of focused imagination that we shape our reality, that we bring forth our desires from the realm of possibility into the world of physical manifestation. Consider for a moment the nature of your own consciousness. Is it not true that whatever you hold in your mind, whatever you focus your attention upon, becomes your reality? When you dwell on thoughts of lack, do you not experience lack in your life? When you focus on feelings of inadequacy, does not the world reflect that inadequacy back to you? But equally, when you direct your mind towards thoughts of abundance, does not abundance begin to flow into your life? When you focus on feelings of love and joy, does not the world become a more loving and joyous place? This, my friends, is the law by which all creation operates. It is the principle that underlies all manifestation. Imagination is the very fabric of reality. It is, as William Blake so beautifully expressed, the divine body in every man. When you imagine, you are literally tapping into the creative power of the universe itself. You are engaging in the same process by which God created the world. For what is God, if not the eternal dreamer, forever imagining new forms and experiences into existence? But here is where so many of you falter. You allow your imagination to run wild with fears, doubts, and limiting beliefs. You focus on what you lack, on what you fear, on what you believe to be impossible. And in doing so, you use the very power that could liberate you to further ensnare yourself. The solution, the path to freedom and fulfillment, lies in learning to focus your imagination. It lies in disciplining your mind to dwell not on what is, but on what could be. Not on your current limitations, but on your infinite potential. Not on your fears, but on your deepest desires. We must share with you a fundamental truth. The world you see around you, the circumstances of your life, are nothing more than our pictured imagination. They are the result of where you have been placing your focus, consciously or unconsciously, up until this very moment. If you find yourself dissatisfied with your current reality, know that you have the power to change it. Not through effort or struggle in the outer world, but through a shift in your inner focus. For the outer world is nothing more than a shadow, a reflection of your inner state of being. To those who would protest, say, but Neville, I have tried to imagine better things for myself. I have tried to focus on what I want, and yet nothing has changed. I say this, your failure is not in your ability to imagine, but in your ability to persist in that imagination. For you see, the creative power of imagination operates by a principle of gestation, just as a seed planted in the ground does not immediately spring forth as a fully grown tree. So too must your imagined reality gestate in the fertile soil of your subconscious mind before it can manifest in your outer world. This is where focus becomes crucial. It is not enough to imagine your desire once or twice and then return to your habitual patterns of thought and feeling. You must learn to dwell in the state of your fulfilled desire. You must make your imagined reality more real to you than the world of appearances that surrounds you. How? You may ask, can one accomplish this? The answer lies in the practice of what I call the law of assumption. To bring about the fulfillment of your desires, you must assume the feeling of their fulfillment now. You must live from the end, experiencing in your imagination the joy, 
the satisfaction, the sense of accomplishment that would be yours, if your desire were already realized, this, my friends, is the true meaning of faith. It is not a blind belief in something outside of yourself. It is the absolute conviction in the reality of your imagined state. It is the unwavering focus on the truth of your desire, even when all outer appearances seem to contradict it. Let me give you an example to illustrate this principle. Suppose you desire financial abundance. The common approach would be to focus on the lack of money in your current reality, to worry about bills, to stress about how to make ends meet. But this focus only serves to perpetuate the very state you wish to escape. Instead, I urge you to shift your focus. Imagine what it would feel like to have all the money you desire. Feel the sense of ease, of freedom, of generosity that would be yours in that state. Don't just think about it. Experience it. Make it so real in your imagination that you can feel the crisp bills in your hands. Hear the sound of coins clinking in your pockets. See the abundant balance in your bank account. Main crucial part. Maintain this focus. Return to this imagined state again and again, especially when the outer world tries to pull you back into the old patterns of lack and limitation. For it is through this persistent focus, this unwavering assumption of the wish fulfilled, that you impress your desire upon the subconscious mind. And the subconscious, my friends, is the true secret of creating reality. It is the fertile soil in which the seeds of your imagination take root and grow. It knows no limitations, no impossibilities. Whatever is impressed upon it must, by the very law of your being, be expressed in your outer world. But remember, the subconscious does not respond to occasional half-hearted impressions. It responds to dominance, to the thoughts and feelings that you persistently entertain. This is why focus is so crucial. It's through focused, persistent imagination that you dominate the subconscious. Now, I can hear some of you thinking, but Neville, this sounds like mere fantasy. How can simply imagining something make it real? To this I say, look around you. Everything you see, every invention, every institution, every work of art began as an idea in someone's imagination. The clothes you wear, the chair you sit on, the very building within. All of these were once mere figments of someone's imagination before they became physical reality. You see, imagination is not fantasy. It is the very substance of reality. The world of imagination, as Blake said, is the world of eternity. It is the divine, eternal realm from which all things proceed. When you imagine, you are literally tapping into the creative power of the universe itself. But here's where many of you stumble. You allow the so-called facts of your current reality to dictate what you believe is possible. You look at your bank account, your relationships, your circumstances, and you say, this is reality. This is what's possible for me. But I say to you, these are not facts. They are simply the effects of your past focusing. The only true fact in this universe is that all things are possible to the one who believes. And belief, true belief, is nothing more than focused imagination. When you can imagine a state so clearly, so persistently, that it becomes more real to you than your present circumstances, then you have truly believed it. And when you have truly believed, you have set in motion the forces that will bring about the manifestation of your desire. This, my dear friends, is the true meaning of the biblical injunction to pray without ceasing. Prayer is not begging or beseeching an external God. Prayer is the feeling of the wish fulfilled. It is the assumption of the state of consciousness that would be yours if your desire were already realized. And to pray without ceasing means to maintain this state. To focus on it persistently until it becomes your dominant state of consciousness. Now, I know that for many of you, this level of focused imagination seems difficult, perhaps even impossible. You are so accustomed to reacting to your outer world, to letting your thoughts and feelings be dictated by circumstances, that the idea of consciously choosing and maintaining a state of consciousness seems foreign but I assure you, it is not only possible, but it is your natural state. It is the way you were meant to live. The difficulty you experience is simply the result of habit, of years or even lifetimes of misdirected focus. But habits can be changed. Focus can be redirected. 
And as you do so, you will discover a power within you that you never knew existed. Let me share with you a technique that I have found to be immensely powerful in developing this focused imagination. I call it the art of revision. At the end of each day, before you sleep, take a few moments to review the events of your day. But here's the crucial part. Don't simply recall what happened. Instead, revise those events in your imagination to align with your desires. Did you have a difficult conversation with a colleague? Revise it. Imagine the conversation going exactly as you would have wished. Feel the harmony, the mutual understanding, the positive outcome. Did you receive news that seemed to contradict your desires? Revise it. Imagine receiving news that perfectly aligns with your wishes. Feel the joy, the excitement, the sense of fulfillment. As you practice this technique, you will begin to realize a profound truth. The past is not fixed. It is not immutable. The past, like the present and the future, exist only in your imagination. And what exists in imagination can be changed by imagination. By revising the events of your day, you are literally rewriting your past and in doing so, altering the trajectory of your future. But revision is not merely about changing specific events. It's about changing your entire concept of self. For you see, my friends, your concept of self is the foundation upon which your entire reality is built. Change your concept of self, and you change everything. Most of you have a concept of self that is based on your past experiences, on the opinions of others, on the limitations you've accepted as truth. But I say to you, this concept of self is nothing more than a habit of thought. It is not your true self. Your true self is the God within you, the infinite creative power that can assume any state, any concept, any identity it chooses. So I urge you, revise not just the events of your day, but your entire concept of self. Imagine yourself as the person you wish to be. Feel what it would feel like to be that person. Experience the world from that state of consciousness. Do this persistently with unwavering focus. And you will be amazed at how quickly your outer world begins to reflect this new concept of self. Now, I can hear some of you thinking, but Neville, what about action? Surely we need to do something in the outer world to bring about our desires. And to this I say, action is necessary, but it is not the cause of your manifestation. Action is the effect. When you have truly assumed the state of consciousness of your wish fulfilled, when you have focused your imagination with such intensity that you are living from the end, appropriate action will flow naturally and effortlessly from that state. You see, the outer world is nothing more than a mirror reflecting back to you your own concepts, your own focused imagination. Change the inner and the outer must change in response. This is the law. This is the way creation works. First in imagination, then in reality. But let me warn you. This work of focused imagination is not always easy. It requires discipline. It requires persistence. There will be times when the outer world seems to contradict your inner assumptions, when circumstances appear to deny the truth of your imagined state. These are the moments that test your faith, that challenge your focus. It is in these moments that you must redouble your efforts. When the world says no, you must say yes with even greater conviction. When circumstances seem to deny your assumption, you must affirm it with even greater intensity. For it is through this unwavering focus, this persistence in the face of apparent failure, that you impress your desire upon the subconscious mind with sufficient force to bring about its manifestation. Remember, my friends, the time it takes for your desire to manifest in the outer world is in direct proportion to the naturalness of your feeling. If you can make your imagined state feel natural to you, if you can dwell in it with ease and familiarity, it will manifest quickly. But if it feels unnatural, if you struggle to maintain the feeling, then the manifestation will be delayed. This is why it's so important to choose your desire wisely. Don't focus on what you think you should want or what others tell you to want. Focus on what truly resonates with your deepest self. For when your desire aligns with your true nature, maintaining the feeling of its fulfillment becomes effortless. It feels natural because it is natural. It is the true expression of who you really are.
Now, let me address a question that often arises when I speak of these principles. Many ask, but Neville, what about other people? Can we use this power to change others or to make them do what we want? There is no other in the absolute sense. There is only one consciousness individualized in what appear to be separate beings. When you change your concept of another person, when you revise your interactions with them and your imagination, you are not manipulating them. You are simply awakening to a new aspect of yourself. For every person in your world is yourself pushed out. They are playing the part that your concept of them has assigned. Change the concept. This understanding liberates you from the need to change others through external means. It frees you from blame, from resentment, from the feeling of being a victim of circumstances or of other people's actions. But when you truly grasp that your outer world is simply your inner world outpictured, you realize that you have the power to change anything and everything by changing yourself. But with this power comes responsibility. For as you begin to grasp the creative power of your focused imagination, you must also realize that you are responsible for everything in your life. Every circumstance, every relationship, every experience is the result of your own imaginal acts. This can be a sobering realization. But it is also incredibly empowering. For if you are the creator of your reality, then you have the power to recreate it in any way you choose. So I urge you, my dear friends, to use this power wisely. Use it to create a life of joy, of abundance, of love. Use it to uplift not only yourself, but all of humanity. For as you raise your own consciousness, you raise the consciousness of the entire world. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is within you. It is not a place you go to, but a state you enter. And you enter it through the portal of your focused imagination. Heaven is simply the realization of your heart's desires. It is the state of consciousness in which all your wishes are fulfilled. You do not need to die to enter this kingdom. You do not need to wait for some future time. You can enter it now, in this very moment, by shifting your focus from what is to what could be, from your current limitations to your infinite potential. Imagine, if you will, that you are already the person you wish to be. Feel the feelings you would feel if all your desires were fulfilled. Experience the joy, the gratitude, the sense of wonder that would be yours in that state. Do this not once, not twice, but constantly. Make it your habitual state of consciousness. As you do this, you will begin to notice changes in your outer world. At first, they may be small, a kind word from a stranger, an unexpected opportunity, a moment of perfect synchronicity. But as you persist in your focused imagination, as you maintain your assumption of the wish fulfilled, these changes will grow larger and more frequent. People will begin to treat you differently. Opportunities will seem to fall into your lap. Circumstances will align in ways that seem miraculous. And all of this will happen, not because the outer world has changed, but because you have changed. You have shifted your consciousness. And in doing so, you have shifted your entire reality. But remember, my friends, this is not about escaping reality. It's about creating reality. It's about recognizing your power as a creative being and using that power consciously and deliberately. It's about taking responsibility for your life and shaping it according to your highest vision. You are not a victim of circumstances. You are not at the mercy of fate. You are the operant power in your universe. You are the author of your life story. And with focused imagination, you can write any story you choose. So I challenge you, starting from this moment, to become more aware of where you are placing your focus. Notice the thoughts you habitually think, the feelings you consistently feel. Are they aligned with your desires? Are, are they perpetuating states? You wish to move beyond. If you find that your habitual thoughts and feelings are not serving you, change them. Use your imagination to create new thought patterns, new emotional states. Imagine the best possible outcome in every situation. Zoom the feeling of your wish fulfilled in every, every moment. This, my dear friends, is the practice of living from the end. It is the art of making your desired future so real, so vivid in your imagination that it becomes your present reality. It is the secret to unlocking your infinite potential. As you leave here tonight, I want you to remember this.
You are not lacking in potential. You are lacking in focus. Your potential is as vast as the universe itself, as infinite as the mind of God. But that potential remains dormant until you awaken it through the power of your focused imagination. So focus, my friends. Focus with all the intensity you can muster. Focus on your desires, on your goals, on the person you wish to become. Make them so real in your imagination that you can taste them, touch them, feel them. Let them become more real to you than the world of appearances that surround you. And as you do this, know that you're engaging in the highest form of prayer. You are communing with the divine creative power within you. You are aligning yourself with the very force that creates worlds. Do not be discouraged if results do not appear immediately in the outer world. Remember, there is often a time lag between your imaginal act and its physical manifestation. This is the season of growth, the period of gestation. During this time, you must hold fast to your assumption. You must persist in the feeling of your wish fulfilled, even when all outer evidence seems to contradict it. For it is your persistence, your unwavering focus, that impresses your desire upon the subconscious mind with sufficient intensity to bring about its manifestation. It is your ability to maintain your chosen state of consciousness, regardless of outer circumstances, that determines the speed and certainty of your manifestation. As you go forth from this place, I urge you to make this practice of focused imagination the central pillar of your life. Let it inform every thought, every action, every moment of your day. Wake in the morning with the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Go through your day maintaining that feeling. Fall asleep at night still dwelling in the state of your realized desire. Do this, and you will set in motion forces beyond your current comprehension. You will align yourself with the creative power of the universe. You will tap into potentials you never knew you possessed. Remember, my dear friends, the world is your mirror. It can only reflect back to you your own concepts, your own focused imagination. So make sure that what you're putting out is what you want to receive back. Focus on love. And you will experience a world filled with love. Focus on abundance. And you will live in a world of plenty. Focus on joy and your life will become a celebration. The choice is yours. The power is yours. You are the master of your fate, the captain of your soul. You are limited only by your ability to imagine and your willingness to persist in that imagination. I say to you one final time. You do not lack potential. You lack focus. Sharpen your focus. Direct your imagination. Persist in your assumption of the wish fulfilled. And you will unlock potentials within yourself that will astound you. You will create a life beyond your wildest dreams. For you are not merely human. You are divine. You are a creative force personified. You are God in action, imagination in motion. Embrace this truth. Live from this understanding. And watch as miracles unfold in your life. Go now and create the life you desire. Go now and fulfill your divine potential. Go now and remember always. To imagine is to create. To focus is to manifest. To persist is to achieve. Thank you, my friends. May your imagination be fertile. Your focus unwavering. And your manifestation swift and joyous. Good night and God bless you all. As we conclude this transformative evening, I want to leave you with a final thought. A seed to plant in the fertile soil of your consciousness. Everything you've heard tonight, every principle I have shared, every technique I have taught, all of it comes down to one fundamental truth. You are the creator of your reality. This is not a metaphor. It is not a feel-good affirmation. It is the literal absolute truth of your existence. Every circumstance in your life, every relationship, every experience is the result of your focused imagination. You've created it all, whether consciously or unconsciously. And if you have the power to create, you have the power to recreate. You have the power to reimagine, to refocus, to reshape every aspect of your life. This is the promise and the challenge that lies before you. As you step out into the night, as you return to your homes and your daily lives, I urge you to carry this truth with you. Let it infuse every moment of your day. Let it guide every thought, every word, every action. This tool is your creation. And if you can create it, you can uncreate it, you can reimagine it. You can transform it through the power of your focused imagination.
When opportunities arise, recognize the mutations of your own creative power. They have the universe responding to your focused imagination, bringing into your experience the people, circumstances, and events that align with your assumed state. And when doubts creep in, when the old habits of thought try to reassert themselves, stand firm in your new understanding. Remind yourself, I am the operant power in my universe. I am the author of my life story. I have the power to rewrite any aspect of my life that does not serve my highest good. My dear friends, you stand at the threshold of a new life, a life of conscious creation, a life of deliberate manifestation, a life where your outer world perfectly reflects your inner state of being. The key to this new life is focus, sharp, unwavering, persistent focus on the states you wish to embody, on the life you wish to create. It's not enough to dabble in these principles, to practice them occasionally or how hard. You must make them the foundation of your existence. The lens. As you do this, you will begin to experience what can only be described as miracles. Synchronicities will abound. Desires will manifest with startling speed and precision. You will find yourself living in a world that seems tailor-made for your joy and fulfillment. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. As you awaken to your creative power, you also awaken to your role as a co-creator of our shared reality. Your thoughts, your imaginal acts, don't just affect your personal experience. They ripple out into the collective consciousness, shaping the world we all inhabit. So I urge you, use this power wisely. Use it to create not just personal abundance, but collective prosperity. Use it to foster not just individual happiness, but universal joy. Use it to manifest not just your own dreams, but a better world for all. For in truth, there's no separation. There's no you and other. There's only the one consciousness expressing itself through seemingly individual forms. As you raise your own consciousness, you raise the consciousness of all humanity. As you fulfill your own potential, you help all of humanity fulfill its potential. This, my friends, is the ultimate purpose of the principles I've shared with you tonight. Yes, they can bring you personal success, wealth, love, and all manner of worldly achievements. But more than that, they can awaken you to your true nature as a divine creative being. They can restore you to your rightful place as a conscious co-creator of reality. So go forth from this place with a new understanding of who you are and what you're capable of. Go forth with the knowledge that you lack nothing, that all the power of the universe resides within you, waiting to be awakened through your focused imagination. Remember, the only limits that exist are those you accept in your own mind. The only barriers to your success are those you create through your own habitual thinking. Break free from these self-imposed limitations. Shatter these illusory barriers. Claim your birthright as a limitless divine being. Focus your imagination on the highest, the best you can conceive. Then go even beyond that. For your potential is truly infinite. Your capacity for growth, for achievement, for love, for joy knows no bounds. You are not here to live a life of quiet desperation. You are not here to simply survive, to merely get by. You are here to thrive, to create, to express the full magnificence of your divine nature. So dream big, my friends. Imagine boldly, focus intensely. Persist relentlessly. For in doing so, you are fulfilling your divine purpose. You are bringing heaven to earth. You are creating the life you were always meant to live. And know that as you do this work, as you embark on this journey of conscious creation, you do not walk alone. The entire universe conspires to support you. All of creation aligns to manifest your focused imagination. You are supported, you are guided. You are loved beyond measure. So go now with my blessings and with the full power of your own divinity. Go and create miracles. Go and live the life of your dreams. Go and fulfill your infinite potential.